Hi everyone, this is Paul Dorgan. I'd like to thank you again for visiting my YouTube channel. In the past several months, I've had quite a few people ask me questions about the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast. And probably one of the most uh, common questions I've been getting is, can a Christian take the Mark of the Beast accidentally? So I thought I would do a short video to answer this question for you. And the answer to this question is actually quite simple. The answer to this question is no. Um, it will not be possible for a Christian to accidentally take the mark of the beast. When we talk about the mark of the beast, we're really talking about the mark of the Antichrist. It's called the mark of the beast because that's how the Apostle John described the Antichrist. Revelation 13, 2, John said, And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. And so we know the Antichrist is coming at some point in the future. But this beast is also coming our way. The false prophet is also coming. John tells us, I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. And when we look at the chronology of events in the final 70th week, it appears that Christians will be able to identify the false prophet from a series of actions he's going to take, and Christians will know when the false prophet will order people to take the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 5, John said he saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And John said, I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? And John was told that the lion that's from the tribe of Judah, he has overcome so that he can open the book and its seven seals. And John says he watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. And John said, There before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. Most Christians believe this rider on the first horse is the Antichrist. This is the Antichrist at the beginning of the 70th week when he enters into a covenant with Israel. We read about this in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. We're told that the Antichrist will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. Now, some translations say he will confirm an already existing covenant with the many. But um, it appears this confirming of a covenant with Israel will include some type of provision that allows the Jewish people to restart animal sacrifices in a rebuilt Jewish temple. So when the Antichrist arrives on the scene at the beginning of the 70th week, he's going to come diplomatically. He's going to enter into that covenant with Israel and there will be a period of quiet for some time. But then things are going to change rather quickly. John said when the lamb opened the second seal, another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. So following the signing of the covenant, there will be a period of quiet for a while, but then it's going to turn into a period of war. Um, we don't know if this is going to be several months after the signing of the covenant could be maybe a couple of years after that. But uh, in Daniel chapter 11, at the end of the chapter, Daniel describes a series of wars the Antichrist will engage in. So there will be a period of war, and this will move us a little further along the timeline towards the midpoint. And then when the Lamb opened the third seal, John saw another horse before him, a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. And John said, I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a day's wages and three quarts of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. So following that period of war, we're going to enter into some famine. Um, and this would be expected uh, during periods of war. The food supply lines are often damaged and food shortages uh, take place. So um, following the period of war, there's going to be a period of famine. And this moves us a little closer to that midpoint. Now, at some point before the middle of the 70th week, it's going to appear that the Antichrist is killed. John said one of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound. And so the Antichrist will appear to be dead. But then it's going to appear that the Antichrist rises from the dead. John said his fatal wound is going to be healed. And people of this world are going to believe this is an actual, literal resurrection. And John tells us the whole world's going to be astonished and they're going to follow the beast. And after he appears to have risen from the dead, the Antichrist will then enter the temple at the midpoint of the 70th week. 
We're told this by the prophet Daniel. Daniel said in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to the animal sacrifices and he will commit the abomination of desolation. And Jesus himself warned us about this. Jesus said, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Jesus says, for then there will be a great tribulation, such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Jesus tells us that when the Antichrist enters the temple at the midpoint, this will start the worst persecution in the history of the world. And the Apostle Paul tells us what the Antichrist will do in the temple. Paul says that Antichrist will exalt himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. It appears that it's going to be right here at the midpoint that the Antichrist is going to enter the temple and demand to be worshipped. And we're told again that the false prophet exercises all the authority of the Antichrist, and he's going to make those who dwell on the earth worship the first beast, because he had a fatal wound that was healed. And the false prophet is going to perform great signs, so that he even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of men. And he's going to deceive those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which it was given him to perform in the presence of the beast. And he's going to tell those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who had the wound of the sword and has come back to life. And Jesus said at that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ or there he is, do not believe it. Jesus said for false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles. Jesus tells us the false prophet will perform great signs. And what is he going to do with those signs? Well, he's going to deceive. He's going to deceive the people who live on the earth. He's even going to try to deceive Christians. Jesus said he's going to try to deceive even the elect if that were possible. However, that's not going to be possible because Jesus said, see, I have told you ahead of time. And so here at the midpoint of the 70th week, anyone who does not worship the image of the beast will be killed. So this takes us to the pale horse. John said, when the lamb opened the fourth seal, there was another horse before me, a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill. So here, right around the midpoint, right at or around the midpoint, we're going to enter into a period of death. And John said, when Jesus opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who'd been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. Now we see specifically Christian death. And they called out in a loud voice, how long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood. And each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were to be killed as they had been was completed. So here with the breaking of the fifth seal, we have Christians being killed. Christians are being killed and martyred right here at the midpoint of the 70th week with the start of the Great Tribulation. The fifth seal martyrs are Christians being killed by the Antichrist and his forces. And the Apostle John tells us this is going to happen. John said it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. And so right here at the midpoint with the start of the Great Tribulation, we see death, specifically Christian death with the fifth seal martyrs. Um, they're slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. And Jesus says the same thing in Matthew 24, 9, that the Apostle John told us in seal 5. Jesus said, then they will deliver you to tribulation and they will kill you and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. And some of the Christians killed at the fifth seal are beheaded. John said, I saw the souls of those who'd been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God and those who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead. It's going to be right here at the midpoint of the 70th week that people are going to be required to worship the image of the beast. If they do not, they will be killed. And taking the mark of the beast is going to be connected to worshiping the beast. We read in Revelation 13, 16, that he, the false prophet, is going to cause all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free men and the slaves, 
to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. Again, this appears to happen at the midpoint of the 70th week. Let's take a look at these two verses together. Revelation 13, verses 15 and 16. And it was given to him, the false prophet, to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast would even speak, and he's going to cause as many who do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he causes all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. So we see that here at the midpoint, worshiping the image of the beast is connected to receiving the mark of the beast. These are going to happen at the same time at the midpoint of the 70th week. And the false prophet is going to provide that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. So Christians are going to know all of the following about the mark of the beast before they're told to take it. Number one, it will be ordered by the false prophet. If it's not ordered by the false prophet, it's not the mark of the beast. Number two, it will be placed on the right hand or the forehead. If it's not placed on the right hand or the forehead, it cannot be the mark of the beast. Number three, it will have the name of the beast or the number of his name. If it doesn't have the name of the beast or the number of his name, it's not the mark of the beast. And number four, it will be required to buy or sell. If it's not required to buy or sell, it can't be the mark of the beast. So Christians will know all these things in advance. Christians will know all these things before they're told to take the mark of the beast. And it appears that it's at the midpoint of the 70th week that the false prophet will order people to take the mark. So the midpoint of the 70th week will be the most critical time in the history of this planet because everyone alive at that time will have to decide, is this man God? Are you going to take his mark and worship him? Or is this man God? Those who say this man is God will be rewarded temporarily, but they will suffer eternally. On the other hand, those who say this man is God will suffer temporarily, but they will be rewarded eternally. The choice could not be more clear. And God tells us through an angel, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he will also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Once again, we see that worshiping the beast is connected to receiving the mark of the beast. These two go together. And anyone who does that will receive the full wrath of God. They will receive God's wrath mixed in the full strength and the cup of his anger. And they will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the angel tells us the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They will have no rest day and night, those who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Again, God connects these. Worshiping the beast is tied to receiving the mark of the beast. A Christian cannot accidentally take the mark of the beast. Anyone who does this will know exactly what they are doing, that they have chosen to worship the beast, and they will receive the full wrath of God. They will receive God's wrath and the full strength of his anger. So, as a Christian, you cannot accidentally take the mark of the beast but you must be prepared to be martyred for refusing to take the mark. Now, some Christians will say, well, I'm not worried about being told to worship the Antichrist, and I'm not worried about being told to take his mark. They'll say, I believe in the pre-trib view of the rapture, so I believe the rapture will happen before the start of the 70th week, and I won't be here to face the Antichrist. Well, if the pre-trib view does turn out to be correct, then it's true that you won't be here to face the Antichrist. However, there's a lot of very strong scriptural support that shows the pre-wrath view may be the correct view of the rapture. The pre-wrath view believes that the rapture will happen sometime in the second half of the 70th week, well past the midpoint. If the pre-wrath view turns out to be correct, you very well could be here to face the Antichrist, or maybe your children or your grandchildren will be here to face the Antichrist. The pre-wrath view believes that Jesus will cut short the Great Tribulation with the breaking of the sixth seal. At that time, the sun, moon, and stars will go dark. 
then Jesus comes in power and great glory, and then he raptures believers sometime here in the second half of the 70th week. We don't know the exact timing of the rapture, but it will be sometime in the second half before Jesus pours out God's wrath during a time period called the day of the Lord. If the pre-wrath view of the rapture turns out to be correct, it will be extremely helpful if you have mentally and spiritually prepared yourself and your family to be martyred for refusing to take the mark of the beast. There is a lot at stake here for the Christians who are alive when the Antichrist arrives. So it really does matter if the pre-trib view of the rapture is correct or if the pre-wrath view is the correct view. For a detailed scriptural explanation of the pre-wrath view of the rapture, you can watch sessions four through six of the End Time Seminar on my YouTube channel. If you have any questions or if you would like to get a hold of me for any reason, you can reach me at pdorgansp at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching.